Yes, I'd like to wish everyone a good Gaben year. I hope everything is going well. I hope you had a beautiful Washana, a beautiful first Shabbos of the year. So there's not going to be too much to be told, because obviously we don't need on Yom Kippur. I will hopefully ensure all day begging and crying to Hashem for a good Gaben year. Well, Moshe Shaw from Lakewood said a beautiful what? He said, why by Kol Nidre we take out the sif, all the sif, we take out the Sifri Torah, we obviously hug it and kiss it. So Moshe Shaw said a beautiful word. He said, let's say, we gave him a he quoted, I think, Kamosha Shalawav. The Kamosha Shalawav brings out, he quoted a king. A king had this son, and the king loved his son dearly. So the king asked his best friend, could you, the king asked his own best friend, the king's own best friend, he asked him, could you please teach my son, you know, everything he needs to know. And the king's best friend was teaching the son everything. And one day the son got angry and was upset at the king's best friend. He started throwing at him, kicking him, hitting him. So the father told his son, "You're going to jail. You can't do that to, to my. To, you can't do that to your teacher, and you can't do that to my best friend." So he put him into jail. And then a couple of weeks in, the king's best friend, the side, the son, the son, the prince, the son, started having remorse. You know, chavata, regret. But he realized the only way he can get forgiveness from his father, the king, if he first gets forgiveness from the king's king's best friend, who is his teacher. So when the the prince got permission to get out of jail, and he hugged and kissed, and you know, and, and apologized remorsefully to the king's best friend, and therefore then the king would then the king, you know, obviously when the king saw this, obviously I'm guessing the king forgave him also. So Moshe Shor said that's shot. Before the world was created, it was just Hashem and His Torah. The Torah HaKadoshah was Hashem's best friend. So he said the, the explanation is that that's why you first hug and kiss the Torah. Because in the Torah, it tells us what we're allowed to do, what we can do, what's Asa and what's Muta. So that's why you first hug and kiss. That's why you first hug and kiss the Torah. It's like as if we're asking forgiveness from the Torah. So we're telling the Torah, we're with Mr. Torah, as if there's no Torah, but we sound like Mr. Torah. There's Mr. Torah. We're with you, Torah, Kedoshah. We love you. We're going to follow your ways. We have regret what we did. We were wrong, what we did to you, Torah. And, and therefore, once we get forgiveness, or once we show that we really love the Torah, then Hashem, we can go forgiveness to Hashem. Because the, the Torah is Hashem's best friend, and that and Hashem gave us this Torah. Hashem gave us his best friend, and unfortunately some of us, not all of us, but some of us were nichshal in the Torah. So therefore, once we show that we show remorse and, and chavata to the Torah, then we can turn to Hashem for forgiveness. Or Mendel Blachman, he's a rabbi in Yeshiva Kambi Yavn in Eretz Yisrael. Now, it applies more to ourselves, you may tshuva, but I thought it was a beautiful word anyway. The Mishnah Bura, I made a Shulchan Aruch, but Mishnah Bura brings down that you should be makrit and pas Yisrael, and that you should only uh, pass a uh, chalav Yisrael for sure, maybe even pas Yisrael, but a sure chalav Yisrael. So Rabbi Blachman said, why did the you made tshuva, you bring out the pas Yisrael and, you, and the chalav Yisrael? You know, no entomins, no drakes, no Dunkin' Donuts. But the minute Yom Kippur ends, boom, here comes Dunkin' Donuts, here comes Drake's, here comes the Wingdings, here comes Entermans. You know, you're fooling Hashem? Hashem doesn't know this, and the minute Yom Kippur ends, you're bringing out the Entermans, the Drake's, the Dunkin' Donuts, the Carvel ice cream? So Blachman said, Pshad, he gave a beautiful example. If you watch a baseball game, um, in a baseball game, the, on, the guy in the on-deck circle is waving five or six bats. Yeah, okay. So okay, so what Blachman said, when the bat is on the bottom deck circle, he's waving six, five or six bats. But when he comes to bat, when he comes to bat, he, there's only one bat in his hand. So the pitcher knows that when he's on the on deck circle, he's only going to wait. When he's when the big, the pitcher knows that when the bat is on the on deck circle, he's waving five or six bats. But he knows when he comes to bat, he's going to only have one bat. So what Blachman said, that's shot. He said that, that when the p- batter drops other bats, the one bat he takes to go to bat with, that one bat is now lighter. It's much lighter for him now that he dropped other bats, meaning that was it, the, even the five or six bats made the bat that he's going to use much lighter, much easier. So Blachman said same thing, especially in America. I can't tell you outside of America, in Israel, of course. Israel and America, I don't know about Canada or Europe, but in America, I think what Moshe finds out the Shuva, that 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 chalavi is, is, is you can maybe you you can use regular milk in America. So when you drop the chumrah of of, of drinking chalavi you drop the chumrah, and now you use regular milk. But the, when you drop the chumrah, the regular mitzvahs, 
the mitzvahs are going to be much easier. The mitzvahs are going to be much easier to keep now in the, once you drop the chumas. You know, and that's why we do it. We keep do it because to make it easier for us to keep the mitzvahs. And the Moshe finds in Shuv, I just want to tell you the response that he said that it's mutter to use, it's permitted to use non, non chalavisol milk, but he still says anyone who fears Hashem, any Yuva Shemaim, should, should drink chalavisol. Any Yuva Shemaim should drink chalavisol still. Any chalavisol should, anyone who fears Hashem should still drink chalavisol. And I'll tell you one more word. I, I, again, I might have said this for Hashanah, I don't remember, but I just. I want to tell you, you know, it says in the Sanat Torah, it says, Malachim Chafazun. The Malachim, the angels are, are shaking. So, what, the angels are not being judged. So, what's going on? So, I woke in, who's connected to Colin Stolen in Bow Park. I woke in, said a beautiful word. Because we know in Rosh Hashanah, that's when the world was created. And therefore, that's when angels were created. And I guess you can say in Yom Kippur is when Hashem is going to give judgment. If Hashem distra- decides, he distra- he, if Hashem's decision is to destroy the world, Hashem decides the world is not fit anymore, i got to destroy the world, then the angels are going to die also. That's why the angels are shaking, because they know it depends on what man, what, Jew, what Jews, what Yidin do, that if Hashem decides to destroy the world, then there won't be any angels anymore. Of course, we know the Bnei Sol is always going to be around, the Jews are always going to be around, but the angels might not know that. A Shlomo Mendel, he's a Washiva Shiva Brooklyn, a Shlomo Mendel, Washiva Shiva Brooklyn, said a different explanation. A beautiful one. He said that, he said, he said also another beautiful one. Rainbow Open is also beautiful. All these different are beautiful. A Shlomo Mendel said, let's say you're walking down the street and you see a kid about to fall out of a window. And you're way down the street. There's no way for you to run even to catch him. You're going to be sitting there shaking. Because you know there's nothing you could do and that kid's going to on either hurt himself or chash on being pass away. There's nothing you do but you're going to sit in there shaking. You're going to cry and shake. So that's what the The angels are shaking because they know there's nothing they can do to stop us. Unfortunately, some of us are not doing the proper repentance. are not doing the proper tshuva. And the angels know what Hashem's decision... Sorry, scratch the tshuva part, but the angels know that Hashem's decision against us. Hashem, the, Hashem, the angels know that the decision of Hashem against us is not going to be one that we like. The, the Hashem's gezeva, or decision, whatever you want to call is not going to be one that we like. And the angels are shaking because they know that. And there's nothing they can do to stop us. I wish everyone a gavadik gabenchiyeh. And on Thursday or Friday, I'm going to leave for Pasha Zinu, Sukkot, and Simchatel. But I'd like to wish everyone a shnat tovah mitukah. Bye-bye. <laughs>